the class of 2017, which is the current sophomores, if any students following behind, they will need to pass at least three Keystone exams, English, Algebra, and Biology, in order to get any high school diploma. So you might have heard, like in New York, they have a Regents diploma, and they used to have a General diploma, although they're getting rid of that. It's any diploma. So you need to pass all three, and I think there are at least two more in the hopper that are sort of pending um, civics and writing, perhaps. I think those are another two, and they wanted like ten more. So there's just a lot um, out there right now. Um, currently, the state-level passing rates on the Keystones are about 50%. So if we anticipate in two years um, what that's going to look like for our sophomores, and this is not just a, a, an issue in, in urban school districts, it's throughout, it's statewide. Um, in particularly, it's very much impacting students whose first language is not English, students with IP, students with anxiety disorder, like anyone who does not fit sort of the very standard high achieving student mold is getting pulled into this net. Um, if you're... If Um, if you look at those scores... What's the Philadelphia passing rate? Okay, so English and math are better than biology. Biology is the one that is the most problematic of the three. Um, Sorry. <laughs> it's, well, it's, 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 it's also very challenging in that, um, you know, many of our students actually, like in Overbrook High School, they didn't have an actual biology teacher until February. They were assigned into an online class. So the inequity of funding is really impacting Plus the narrowing of the curriculum over time, focusing on reading and math makes science, you know, achievement more challenging. In biology, in the neighborhood comprehensive high schools, so we're not talking Centrals and Mastermans, but we're talking, you know, Southern, Bartram, yes. King, Fernet. The biology passing rate is currently about three to five. Mid fifties. So even the the s selected mid schools that are not the highest, highest test score entry level schools, it's about a 50-50 shot if your sophomore is going to pass this bio exam. And you have to pass all three. It's not like two out of three is fine and you'll, you'll go ahead. No, you have to get all three. So I think for the most part, and why it's so important for us to come together today, is that as I don't think most parents are aware of how serious the consequences are. We're not. I don't think the district is fully communicating that to parents or students. It's just like another test. Um, so just put that away and make sure you tell your neighbors. Like I'm I would say many, the opt-out numbers are way bigger than you think because every kid that goes to a private or Catholic school in this city or in this state, they've effectively opted out. They don't have to pass the keystones to graduate from Roman Catholic High School. And those are students. Is that an elite and school? Um, yeah, all non cyber people, charter regular traditional homeschool don't have. They've them. already opted out. Um, you can graduate from say I have two students that are going to Roman Catholic High School for boys, and they are um, very happy to be going there. They're not going to have to go through this. So their parents have found a way, whether they knew it or not, to make this requirement not on them. So it's really only for certain people. The other piece is, so they will say, okay, don't worry, you can take it as many times as you need to to pass. Well, and I can send you this link. It's a York County School District, but it has the state level rates, like the overall state aggregate. And it has the rate for passing on the second try statewide is about 22%. So it's not as though you fail once, but you get it together and you're going to pass it easily the second time. And the so reality you don't is... anymore. Right. If so, you've taken algebra and you've done that and you've received passing. credit, you might have even had an A in the class. Yeah. But then you're we'll you're going to have to move on to the next you know, subject. Like, yeah. How long has it been since you've done that? If you had to take algebra right now, would you pass? You know, that's the question. <laughs> and what's really interesting is right now in the suburbs, parents are getting parents know this is happening in the suburbs because when their child fails, they get rostered into a remedial class because those districts have the money to hire the teachers to offer the remedial classes. Now, I'm not saying like narrowing the curriculum and making kids take double, you know, sections of math and a remedial math is necessarily the best approach to education, but at least within that framework, those kids are getting support through the school year to try again. 
Philadelphia does not have any consistent approach to remediation. I think teachers and schools are kind of trying to cobble together some things and try to, you know, it, they're redirecting time and chemistry to bio review and they're doing stuff after school clubs for kids that need help, but there's no funding behind that. And whatever is happening is happening at the behest of whatever the school community is able to put together. But there's no resources behind that. So that's very important. There's incredible inequity in how they're preparing for remediation. The other piece is, so they'll say, well, if you still can't pass, and you can take it as many times as you want, and I'm sure the testing company is making lots of money every time the kids take these tests, you know, somebody's getting paid. Um, on the next round, there's this project-based assessment, which sounds pretty good, right? Like a project. Well, that's, that's a nice alternative. It's not a real project. It's an online computer exam. And for the most part, it's an unfunded mandate. There's no money from the state to cover the cost of administering this project. The one district that I know that has administered it is Radnor. No surprise. They have a lot of resources. So their kids, they have maybe Lower Marion and Radnor, 20 and 30 percent are failing bio there too. So just so you know. So in Radnor, the 20 percent that failed bio got put in a remedial class in the fall. Like, so they failed bio in their sophomore year. In their junior year, they got put in a remedial class. They took it again in January of their junior year. Instead of waiting to see if they failed again, the district said, we're putting you right into the PBA because they want to make sure their kids are taken care of. So they put those kids into the PBA. It was rostered as another remedial class. And I, I spoke with a parent. Her daughter got A's in bio. She has an IEP, but she's a good student. It took her from winter break through early March to go through one module of the PBA, and she was rostered into it as a class for about two and a half hours a week. So there are two modules for each test. So essentially it was a whole nother semester-long remedial class, that she, and she was the, one of the first to finish within her cohort. So imagine if you're a, a, a student whose first language is not English, and you're not passing the keystones, and you're taking three of these. The reality is the district or has six. told me, yeah, six, six modules, so six pieces. They don't have the funds to actually offer the PBA right now. Like, they, it exists, but we can't give it because it has to be given. It's not like you can just send kids to the computer lab and work their way through on their own schedule. It has to be in a secure testing environment, just like the PSSAs and Keystones. So there has to be a proctor and, you know, everything down off the walls, and the computers have to be available, and the bandwidth, and everything has to be there. You know, for schools like Mastermind or Central, where maybe they've got 30 kids that need to do this, or 10, or whatever, that may be doable. In schools where large numbers, hundreds, it is gonna ex it's going to implode. And the press is not covering this. The district is not raising this. And, and the time is ticking, because if you're a sophomore and you fail, you've got maybe one year to finish all these PBAs, and no one knows what the passing rates are. The PBAs are actually being graded not by your child's teachers, but by um, other volunteer teachers in the state who are getting Act 48 credit <laughs> for it. So as opposed to getting actual professional development, they're getting they have to volunteer their time to work for this, to corporation. Work for this corporation to levy. The mental health impacts are huge, even in schools that are very high achieving. Um, I worry about self-harm and suicides and things in this class of 2017 where kids who have always done fine all of a sudden are going to not graduate. So it's a very messed up system. We, it, it, it's a state law. This is not something that the School Reform Commission can change. It's not something that the mayor can change. It's not something that Bill Hyde can change. It, the state legislature has to change it. So it's Harrisburg. It's Harrisburg, and currently, um, state senators, there are a couple bills, there are a couple House bills and a Senate bill that are working their way through. They have different bits and pieces, and maybe David has more sense of that from the legal angle. Of, some only make it a local decision, which always makes me worry because I think when they make it local, it makes me think, well, Philadelphia is going to be the one district that for some reason has to still take them. Um, <laughs> but anyway, so that's the big picture on Keystones. And The universities and schools outside of high school don't look at they keystones. Look at mm -hmm. The keystones is a nothing test. <laughs> so everything that Allison just went over and all of this hardship, we should be testing for a reason. You know, it, we, yeah. sh we should get something out of it. 
It doesn't mean anything. No one looks at the Keystone exams. It's for this finite amount of time when everything is coming down and you just have to see who's benefiting from it. If it's not the school or the teachers or the students, then who's benefiting from all of this high, you know, this anxiety? You don't mm -hmm. pass these keystones. You have to do like a 20-hour test, you know, 40-hour test, the, the PBA, and and what does it all mean? You know, mm -hmm. we're setting our kids up. And then one other thing is uh, for parents, and maybe you know the teachers are in a position to tell you this, but while the keystones are going on for this week and a half, the students who have passed don't come in late. So they're actually the students who are had done okay, like are missing out on actual meaningful instruction. And these tests happen in, in January and, and May. So the kids who are doing, you know, have done okay are actually still being hurt because they're missing out on, you know, several, like when you add it all up, yeah, several days of real days. time. Yeah. It's 12 yeah. days. Yeah. And then when they come on a half day, how much is happening on a half day? That's questionable. Mm -hmm. Because all the other kids are completely spent. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's movies. Yes. So it's six days or ten days or three weeks of movies. Mm -hmm. it's for ten years, the, I'm putting it in quotes, the reformers have controlled the dialogue on this. And they say things that are very appealing to parents and taxpayers that say, our schools are failing, our teachers are failing, so something needs to change. And we need to raise our expectations. Well, it's very hard to argue with raised expectations. But these aren't raised expectations. These are, these are just insane mandates that really don't improve the actual education of children and help them get what they want out of life. So they've really controlled the dialogue on this. And it's extremely, among teachers, and Kelly and I have discussed this, it's extremely taboo to even talk about it. That's what I, I when we started the opt-out movement in our school, we had a large number of teachers who I love and respect very much stop talking to us and avoid us. They were so scared because their entire career, this isn't like, hey, maybe we shouldn't do this thing. Maybe this has been wrong all along. And we were complicit all along. It is so taboo that good friends of ours are hiding in the shadows, even though we suspect, and we know some of them really agree with us. But these are the most educated, responsible people in our society when it comes to children. And we are terrified. Yeah. Could you guys um, talk a little bit also about how, what, what, what we know or what we suspect about how these keystones will be used to assess teachers as being uh, failing teachers or acceptable teachers or great teachers, depending on how much their kids improve. Right, that's the other part. Well, right now it's part of our VAM um, evaluation, which started last year, and which some of the teachers evaluated. I'm going to get that, um, but it's also part of the reason there were teachers that wanted to come here today and couldn't because they have to be at a PD so that they can select which students they'll be responsible for, and once that selection is made those scores factor into a portion of their evaluation. Right now, the portion's not huge. I, I want to say it's 12%. Maybe the testing person knows the answer to that. I believe it's 12% of our evaluations based on the scores. Is it a little bit more? Okay, 16, I mean. It was 12 or 16 yeah. um, in, in those tested subjects, of course. So the teachers that, I don't have to do that. I teach technology, I teach ESOL in level two. So I'm not asked to do that, although once the students are in level three, those teachers are. And um, you get the building scores, right? Yes, yeah, so of course the building scores, which also takes into account our graduation rate. Um, from what I understand, the, the students who started four years ago, that doesn't take into account the students who move or leave, or there's other, you know, we've Every year, at the end of the year, we get a gift in a nice package of students who've been asked to leave other places. Um, sometimes it's 12, sometimes it's 15, sometimes it's more. <clears throat> students who are seniors and are not going to graduate, and now they show up on our door a couple months before the end of the year, like, oh, you know, it, it was some other reason. It wasn't because they weren't passing. It wasn't because they weren't graduating. It's not because they're not proficient. It's because of some other reason. Uh, behavioral problems or whatever process that they went through from charter schools and special admit schools and Catholic schools and all the other schools that have an option, when they come to our neighborhood school, we don't have that option, nor do we want it. 
no one's asking to not receive students. That's the job we've been blessed to have. We want to teach the students in whatever shape and form they come in. Um, but that is all factored into our evaluation as teachers. And it's the rhetoric that, that takes over most of our professional development. We, just like the students are not getting rich um, experiences in the classroom because of test preparation, we're not able to get rich professional developments that really matter, that people are excited about. It's SLOs and VAMs and uh, how to use your data. I know my data. I know that we're less than 30% proficient in most areas. I also know why, but that is not a conversation that really is inviting. Um, I'm the eccentric. I'm the crazy person who talks about, but do you understand that this kid came from a refugee camp six months ago taking the algebra test? We have kids from the Congo who don't know how to make a capital letter on the keyboard taking benchmark tests that take two days to teach them how to log into the computer system to school net. And, and I, I really wish that all the people who talk about how crazy I am and, and politically active, <laughs> I wish that they would come and try to help Faustin log in to the benchmark on SchoolNet and, and ask him his story and, and how he got here and what happened to him and the trauma that he's been through. And then traumatize him some more. And, and I really challenge anybody to come and do that and then feel differently than I do. Was there, what's the, um, the, the law project? What's your perception? I was just going to add to that, the evaluation piece. Mm -hmm. An interesting thing that not many people have kind of figured out yet is that, so the actual test scores for teachers is a relatively small amount. However, your principal also is evaluating you. And part of their principal evaluation system is based on how closely their own evaluation of a teacher mirrors what the value added um, what? Stuff. Uh, and so, so in other words, they're incentivized oh, to sort of uh, have a, a sort of a, a, wow. a kickback right. toward, towards that. And, and really this, great. I'm talking now to to um, those. I'm I'm in a I'm in a school where I I'm pretty confident I can demonstrate growth. My kids come in low, and we know when we look at the data that our kids we add value and we can show that with um, I'm putting that in quotes um, through test scores that our kids do grow and learn if they stay in our school for 6th, 7th, and 8th grade. It's a middle school. Mm -hmm. For those of you who ha are Teach at Central and all these other very wonderful special schools and parents, listen to this. Yeah. You will not be able to demonstrate growth. No. Because you have kids that are because already, they're already, they're, they're already they're achieving as high as they can possibly right. achieve. Yep. You will get fired within two years according to the state system. And all those teachers, parents that you connect with, I'm yeah. looking at you, Dad, because you look so completely scandalous. <laughs> um, good, I did my job today. Um, all those teachers that you had connections with, they will go. So the, 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 these big, wonderful high schools like Central and Masterman and SLA, they will have the revolving door of staff that we have in, in, the, um, in the neighborhood schools. But that happened this year for Central, that the growth that couldn't prove yeah. the and in growth rate, right, sustain it. We have two, I, in two years I will be fired, as I teach beginner ESOL. In two years, according to state law, I will have to get fired. There's no other way. I will never be able to get the score that I need to keep my job. And I've been there eight years. So at the 10-year mark, I will not be able to show the proper growth, and I need to go. And, and that, that, that's a huge, involved. parents need to know that. We need to understand what's going on, because we have 100 and 80,000 kids in Philadelphia Public Schools. We've got, it's probably 200,000 if you, if, you if you look at everyone who's in the public and charter schools. Parents want to believe that we have our kids in great places and that they're going to get smart and, and we can go on with our day and everyone has, has struggled. Um, but this is something we have to figure out a way to stay. We've got to sit on this. This is demeaning to everyone. This is not, it's damaging what's going on in the schools now, this, um, this premise of testing. And I get it. I am a black woman. And, you know, with uh, segregation, separate but equal, Brown versus Board of Education, the reason why we thought things were um, unequal is because we didn't have an assessment. Everyone said it was equal. We knew it wasn't. When we were integrated, we said we needed to have some sort of testing to make sure that we were getting the same education as the white kids down the street. And uh, that's when there was a lot of testing. I've, talk, I've spoken to a lot of people. I, t I talk a lot about education. 
And that's where a lot of people stay. But they have the whole testing regime has completely morphed into something that's cancerous right now. It's eating up the good parts of what education is supposed to be. And parents need to step into the ring and stay. I will not allow my children to be tested because it does not further their education. It will not help them get to the next level. And it's emotional for me because I cannot figure out a way for them to get the education that they deserve without me having um, I don't understand why the public education now will not do that for my kids. Um, parents need to stay and fight. I know that different different issues and concerns. I'm finding, I'm so, finding many, so many different mentalities mentality today. It seems, it seems hard. hard. It seems it challenging. Seems challenging. I don't say hard because the only thing hard, hard is the concrete that we walk on. Everything, everything else, else, is else, is else, is else is a challenge. Um, so, 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 I'm ready for, I'm this, ready challenge. for this challenge. And I was built, and I was for, built this. for this. I think that, I think we, that all have we all have a purpose in life. And mine's, and mine's going to take on a task that most of that most are back away, back from, away from. That impossible, that impossible so people, people say it's impossible. I see possibilities. I don't see anything, I don't see anything as being impossible. impossible.